This week is definitely the week of super affordable titanium field watches because in my previous video, I reviewed this very affordable Bernie. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you another super affordable titanium field watch, but this time it's by Bodery. Some people have bought this watch for around 69 US dollars. So I'm hoping both of these watches will be available in the upcoming sale at the end of August for under 70 US dollars. Yeah, with that in mind, affiliate links in my video description. If you fancy buying anything during the next big AliExpress sale, of course, I'd love for you to use my links. It really does help to support me and this channel. Now in this video, I am gonna be showing you this Bodery running through all the specifications, but I'll do a quick comparison with this um, Bernie as well. I do plan to test both of these watches in Herman, my water pressure tester. I'll post that video on I Like Watches too, and I'll do a loom comparison video at the end of this, well, Bodery field watch review. So Bodery watches remind me a little bit of Kronos watches. Um, nice packaging, by the way. Um, it's a sort of um, shipping container, isn't it? Um, yeah, why do they remind me of Kronos? Well, they make very nicely made watches. I think their build quality is very, very nice. Um, but they just seem to miss the mark fairly regularly on most of their watches. I've reviewed quite a few Bodery watches now and I've always liked them, but they've not really been the sort of watches that I would want to buy if I was you know, limiting myself to 10 watches or something like that, or if I didn't have um, this YouTube channel. Obviously I'm getting watches from them for free on occasions and this one I have bought, but yeah, they just never seem to really nail their designs. And you have to give them a little bit of credit though, because, well, you have to give them a lot of credit because um, not only is their build quality pretty good, um, but their designs are more original than most um, manufacturers that sell watches on AliExpress. So um, yeah, they're definitely putting themselves out there and creating some rather interesting and unusual looking watches um, but I think that's one of the reasons why on the whole um, their watches don't sell fantastically well although having said that this watch has proven to be a very popular watch it's not sold as many units as the um, Bernie but it's sold well over 100 units which is pretty good for Bodery considering it's a fairly new release it is a titanium field watch as you can see and um, yeah, it bears a striking resemblance to a few other field watches that are available. And um, yeah, it's prompted me to consider getting in a Bertucci for review. It's an American brand. Um, they sell watches on Amazon and they sell very affordable watches um, made of titanium that look quite similar to this. Um, they tend to house quartz movements, the more affordable ones. But um, yeah, I mean, it's a good looking field watch, isn't it? Comes with a very nice strap, um, sapphire crystal, I believe. Um, Miota 8215, I think, in here. I'll remove the case back and we'll have a look at the movement in a moment. I'll pop it on the time grapher as well. But um, in terms of its looks, I think it definitely looks better than the Bernie. The lugs are a bit, well, I say a bit more chunky, quite a bit more chunky. The bezel's more chunky. It's just got a more sort of physical, manly presence to it. And... Um, yeah, I mentioned in my Bernie review that I'm not a massive fan of super cheap titanium watches because they can feel quite sort of cheap feeling. Well, they're very light and um, yeah, they tend to be quite jangly. And whereas this one doesn't have that feeling, it's on this um, single pass nylon strap, which feels very substantial and chunky. So this watch just has a better feeling to it. So the strap is a single pass nylon strap. What I like about it is um, they've got these sort of reinforced elements at the ends. But what that also does is, um, although this one's not sliding too freely, um, occasionally in the past, um, when I've gone to remove watches from straps like this, um, gravity has pulled the case um, down the strap and yeah, it's fallen off. But this, um, these elements at the end here are going to prevent that from happening. I'm not sure that's the intention, but um, yeah, there's some sort of reinforced stitching elements at the end. I'm not going to tell. Actually, I will take it off because we need to have a look at the case back, don't we? Nice hardware on the strap. It appears to match the case in terms of its color and it's finishing i'm not entirely sure on the material but it's not very heavy so i wouldn't be surprised if that's titanium you know it's signed and yeah it is a very nice quality strap solid titanium 100 meters of water resistance the bernie is uh, 50 meters 
And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to testing these watches inside of Herman, although Herman can only test up to 60 meters. This watch is called the Bodery Voyager, which is, yeah, a nice touch. And here's the movement. It is, of course, an automatic movement, a Miyota movement beating 21,600 beats per hour. It doesn't hack this one, unfortunately, um, but it does hand wind, obviously, and um, it winds up the mainspring with that weighted rotor, which does free spin, obviously, um, in one direction. Screw down case back and a screw down crown helping to achieve the 100 meters of water resistance. And I'm fairly hopeful, actually, because um, quite often with cheap watches, when you're undoing or doing up the case back, you can feel metal on metal. It feels like the O-ring or the rubber grommet in there isn't really making contact um, with either side, either the case back or the case. Um, but in this particular instance, um, when I was undoing and doing up the case back, it did feel like that grommet was, um, yeah, compressing between both the case back and the case. So, yeah, I suspect you can take this watch swimming, but, um, yeah, hopefully we'll find out in that video on I Like Watches 2 very, very soon. So like the Bernie, the Bodery also comes with a sapphire crystal. Um, no mention of AR coating on the listing on AliExpress, whereas, um, well, with the Bernie, it's quite obvious there is a fairly strong blue hue um, to that AR coating on the crystal. And both crystals are flat. Um, the crystal on the Bodery actually sits below the bezel, adding an additional sort of element of protection. Um, the crystal on the Bernie sits flush with the top of the bezel, um, so I don't suspect that will be prone to damage or scratches, and um, yeah, with them both being sapphire. Um, it's a good peace of mind, isn't it? My Bodery didn't rock up with a ding on one of the lugs either, so um, yeah, this Bodery has turned up in, well, brand new condition, which you would expect because it was a brand new watch. The finishing is as you would expect, it's a sort of bead blasted finish, which is cheaper to manufacture, um, manufacture than um, polished surfaces or brushing. I definitely prefer the Bodery, even though it comes on a single pass nylon strap. Um, yeah, I'm not wild about cheap titanium bracelets like this. Um, so yeah, I actually prefer this strap over this bracelet. I prefer the chunkier look of the case. I prefer the look of the dial as well. Now, in terms of the movements, um, I'm torn, actually. Um, I really like the VH31. Um, it's a quartz movement, so you're not going to have to keep it wound or constantly um, adjust the time if you stop wearing it for more than a day or two. Um, and the Miyota, the affordable 8000 series Miyota movements, they're not the best, are they? So it is an automatic, which I know many of you prefer, but I actually would probably rather have the VH31 in a watch like this. Water resistance, well, this is 50 meters and this is 100 meters of water resistance. Um, I suspect the loom on the Bodery is going to be better, but we'll know that in a moment. Um, the Bodery is costing more, obviously, at the moment, um, but I think that's to be expected given it um, houses an automatic movement by Miyota. The Bodery is definitely chunkier. It's going to sit quite a bit higher on your wrist, um, especially considering it's got this single pass. You put a double pass on this and it's going to sit really quite high on your wrist. But um, yeah, I still much prefer the Bodery. I mean, just look at it. Really cool, chunky crown and protected by those um, sort of extended elements of the case it's just a much better looking watch and for me that's really the main thing that would sway me towards the bodery let's get it on the wrist right here it is then on my roughly average sized wrist and dimensions and weight in the bottom right hand corner there you can see it definitely sits higher um, on my wrist than the bernie does um, but i don't mind that at all there's definitely some presence to this watch it's not a huge field watch um, but it is just sort of a chunky looking manly field watch i really like the way it looks actually i really like the way this watch looks and i really don't like the way the bernie looks I have to be honest so um yeah the bernie is not a watch i would wear generally um but this absolutely is um i think they've nailed it actually um if they'd have put a different movement inside this i think maybe it would have been slightly more popular. I think the 8000 series movement does tend to put a few people off. You put a 9000 series in it and it's going to be quite a bit more expensive. Um, if it had the VH31 in it, I suspect it would have um, sold in even bigger numbers because it would have been slightly cheaper. And um, yeah, I think the VH31 is a cool movement, but 
regardless, um, yeah, it's a very cool field watch. And um, if you can pick this thing up for sub $70, I think it's a fantastic deal. So, yeah, guys, let me know in the comments section. What do you think of this Bodery? I think it's the best watch they've ever made, actually. Um, like I said at the beginning, um, they remind me a little bit of Kronos. Um, they make some nice watches, but every now and then they just make some odd decisions. And, um, yeah, their designs can be a little bit odd sometimes. But um, this one, they've almost nailed it, haven't they? Almost nailed it.